Hey everyone, it's Christine and today I just want to speak from what I feel is God's heart and message on the dark hour of the soul. It's not a subject we hear spoken about often today, but I believe there is something beautiful that the Lord wants to reveal to our lives because as we often walk through those broken times in our lives and sometimes it's those broken times they're the ones we don't want to display on Facebook um, we like to show the the images of our lives when everything's rosy and everything's looking great but do you know that those broken times of your lives when placed into God's hands and into his plans can actually produce so much fruitfulness for you can produce such a harvest of joy of God's works for you and through you um, and I just want to and I really believe at this time where so many people are walking through sudden brokenness things have not gone the way they planned all of a sudden the rug has been pulled from underneath people's jobs, from underneath people's expectations and their hopes and their dreams. But as we will take that brokenness and place it into God's hands and plans, we will see God open heaven to us and we will receive only the best that God has to bring. Um, do you know there's been times when, you know, of brokenness in my life that I can look on and I can see and I can thank God for the incredible blessing, the incredible fruit, the incredible change that he brought in my life through it. And I know that today God can do the exact same for you. Um, it says in the Bible in and this was Jesus himself speaking before he went through the greatest suffering ever known to man. The greatest pain, loss, heartache that anyone could experience Jesus was about to go through. And his heart was so selfless that on the night that Jesus was betrayed and he was having his last supper with the disciples, Jesus was actually encouraging them he was speaking to their hearts not to be afraid um, but to put their trust in God that he was promising them peace that uh, his peace he would give to them wasn't going to be as the world would give and encouraging them when Jesus needed encouragement himself when Jesus needed somebody else to come along and and speak into his pain and his situation he was selfless. He was giving encouragement out to his disciples and to us. And it says in John chapter 12, verse 27, and Jesus went on to say, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. When I read that, uh, just today it reminded me of another verse actually a verse that was so precious to me at the time when my dad was promoted to heaven um, and it says in Psalm 50 verse 15 call on me or trust in me in your time of trouble I will rescue you and you shall give me glory do you know it's not natural at times like that it takes God's super in your natural to be able to glorify God, to be able to keep going, to be able to experience and testify of the joy, the supernatural joy of the Lord that can be your strength, of his peace that is with you. We don't grieve or mourn as the world grieves and mourns, but we have a hope and we have a trust and we have an answer for those who are going through suffering that, hey, God is with you. He will not leave you. Call on the name of the Lord. Many of us 
try to act like gods in our own lives when all he wants us to do is to surrender and call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Um, so I just want to encourage you, whatever you go through, trust in him, call in him. And just as Jesus, when he approached the darkest hour of his soul, he knew it was for this purpose that he came. So what can God do in our broken times? What God wants to happen if we will place our lives in his hands and his plans is he'll break off our lives all that is not of God all that is not good for us he will break off us selfishness he'll break away from us those things that pertain to sin and instead we will live lives that pertain to godliness and that's his goodness and his best for us I'm so thankful now for those times of brokenness in my life because they ended up becoming the means of great fruitfulness in my lives above and beyond my wildest dreams. Your brokenness is your openness to heaven just as Jesus' brokenness was our openness and our entry point to heaven so is our brokenness, our openness to God's entry point in our lives, to the Holy Spirit coming into our lives and just producing so much good and so much fruitfulness through our lives. Um, I've certainly gone through times, as, as many of us have, of you know, times of losing a, a loved one, times of relationship breakups, which can be pretty painful and traumatic, times of losing a child and it's that that I'm going to speak um, to you about today because what God did in that natural situation turned into something very supernatural in my life and when you go through times where you're the, the Bible speaks about falling on the rock and being broken and we know the rock is Jesus and the Bible gives us a choice. It's an obscure verse in the Bible. And Jesus himself said, we can either fall upon the rock, which we know is Jesus and be broken, or the rock will fall upon us and we'll be crushed. What's that saying? That's saying we can either allow God to break off those things from our lives that aren't going to do us any good, to, to break off our lives, all those things that um, won't benefit our futures, are, are not of any eternal significance that will ultimately take us away from the best God has from us or we can allow those things to crush us and to destroy the purposes that God would have originally had for us and I don't know about you but I certainly don't want my life to be crushed but I do want my self-life to be broken before God so that he can make me whole before God as he originally intended me to be before sin came in. Sin leaves us in a very broken state and actually God just wants to. He is the one that in our brokenness it becomes our wholeness again. How beautiful is that? And do you know when I went through um, a, a time of, of losing uh, what was a baby four years ago God did an incredible miracle in my life I ended up spending eight nights in hospital it wasn't looking good um, unknown to me at the time I had been badly hemorrhaging and um, I literally birthed this little child and I held I got to hold that child in my hands just David and I held this little child what was a little baby in my hands and we gave that back to God but in that brokenness it was my openness to receive such a miracle from God I went through eight nights battling for my life but I always fought from a position of victory, knowing that Jesus was with me. And there was one night towards the end of this particular battle for my life 
that I, about two o'clock in the morning, the alarm went off in the room and I could feel the life and the strength going from my body um, as all of the, uh, the, the nurses and the doctors flooded into my room and I remember hearing as I was fading in and out, hearing them panicking um, and then they were putting, you know, what one was alarmed as to when they came into my room, why the room, it was an August night, it was humid, it was hot, and yet in my room it was like a freezer. It was freezing cold. And I was going through a real battle then for my life and I was calling on the Lord, I was declaring God's word, I will not die but I will live and declare the works of the Lord. And once they'd stabilised me, and they then left the door open because they were, I could hear them outside talking and saying, I'm going to make note of this, how weird it was. Why was my bedroom feeling like a freezer? I can remember after that battle just lying there thinking, this is too weird for me, Lord. If only my husband was here, I, I didn't want to be alone. And then the room was flooded with such light and such warmth because that ultimate battle that raged for my life, that evil that had tried to invade. God came with his warmth and with his presence and what the Lord said that night, I want to pass on to you. In the middle of my brokenness, he came and he said, the Father spoke and he said, I love you, oh how I love you. I sent my son to fight for you. I thought I'd been fighting. Jesus, he'd already fought and won it all for me at the cross. And then my beautiful Heavenly Father said, together we give to you our treasure, the Holy Spirit. And I saw in that moment, I understood it. I saw just the unity between God our Father and Jesus, the Son and the, the beautiful Holy Spirit, the oneness, the love, the honour the Father and Son have for the Holy Spirit. Oh, and how the Holy Spirit um, loves to, to serve the purposes of God and Jesus. And there's just this incredible oneness. No wonder Jesus himself prayed that we would be one just as they are one. That we would know that unity and that love because I experienced the immense love of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that night in such a, a special way. And yes, you could say it was in the midst of my brokenness that was my openness uh, to experiencing God in a new and in a fresh and in, and in a revelatory way for my life. And I haven't, I've only ever shared this once before but I remember at that time then questioning God and querying and saying Father I've heard of angels visiting people after a time of suffering or maybe even Jesus but I've never heard of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit visiting and just like that the word and it's the the word of God lit up in my room and it was from John 13 verse 23 wasn't a verse that I knew wasn't one that I memorized but I found later and the day after sure enough it was in the bible and as I asked and I questioned God is this kosher God is this right that the father son and holy spirit I've never heard anything like this before and I love everything I'm passionate about the word of God and everything that's spoken should always be able to be backed up by the word of God and Jesus answered them, it says in John 13, 23, that appeared lit up in my room before me. Jesus answered, whoever loves me will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. How powerful, how beautiful is that? You, in the midst of brokenness, get to host the presence of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Our lives have been called ultimately to host the presence of God. Do you know what? What a small price to pay sometimes 
that we will shake off the things of this world, we'll shake off sin, we will trust him in the midst of those things we don't understand. We will do what God tells us to do right here and that is keep my word. Do you know what the Lord said to me as I saw that? As that, that word was lit up and it's so powerful I want to say again, Jesus answered, whoever loves me will keep my word and my father will come to him and we will make our home with him. And the Lord said, tell my children to keep my word. Anyone who knows me, anyone who's listened to any other messages that have been put out there, anyone who's heard me preach um, in the past, anyone who I have spoken with in our pastoral care office at church, they will know I will always lead them to Jesus and to the word of God because I know the truth. I know the power there is in his word. I know it works and I've heard his voice saying to me, Christine, tell my children to keep my word. Whatever you're going through, maybe it's the loss of a job, maybe it's the loss of a loved one, maybe it's the loss of a baby like I went through, maybe it's the loss of a relationship, maybe it's some lack in some form in your life right now, maybe it's a loss of confidence. God's way for you in the midst of your brokenness is keep my word because God is the God of breakthrough. He will always come through for you. And what's more, you can get to host the presence of God at that time. Your brokenness, the dark hour of your soul, will become the hour of God's power, the hour of God's resurrection power in your life if you will commit all into his hands and into his plans. When things happen beyond your control that you don't understand, expect the Father, the Son, beautiful Jesus and the Holy Spirit to show up and to show off in your situations. The Lord loves you. Hold on to his word. He's with you. He's got you. He will never let you go. Often we can come so close to letting go of him, to letting go of faith, whenever we can be so near to our miracle and to our breakthrough. Do you know the very next morning I awoke and I was completely healed and I was whole. I had a doctor stand at the bottom of my bed, a consultant, he shook his head and he said his only response, it wasn't medical words at all, but what came out of his mouth was, whatever was fighting to take your life has gone. That's it. It was confirmed by another consultant, I was completely healed. They couldn't understand why what had happened, but I knew that just one touch of that beautiful presence of, of my Father, of Jesus and the Holy Spirit made me whole again. And what's more, God did a, a miraculous work in me emotionally. He completely set me free. And that's why I know whatever hurt you're going through, God is able to heal you. He is able to to make you whole. Sometimes it's a process. Sometimes, as I experienced then, it was instantaneous and miraculous. And I had been absolutely broken over the loss of that baby. Let me not make any bones about it. And I'm not going to pretend that, that I wasn't. I really wanted that baby. And the doctors had also told me, I'd said, although that was a surprise four years ago, um, I'd announced it to my children and, and I was heartbroken at that loss. But what the doctors, I said to the doctors, well, could I, you know, what would be the chances of, of having another baby? And they informed me 1%. And I looked at them with my tears and with my brokenness, which became my openness to the miraculous. And I said, I'll take that 1% with Jesus. Whatever has been spoken over you, it doesn't matter how impossible it looks. Our God is the God of the impossible. Trust him. There is nothing impossible 
There is nothing that he will not do and he cannot do for you that isn't in your best interests for you. And I, after that, I, I spoke with my, my hubby and, and I was saying to him, you know, that, you know, what, what would, could we consider, what would he think about a, another one? And there was no way he was going there. He knew the doctors, he'd heard what had been said, but I sought God and in my brokenness, God gave me a word. And that word was, he said to me from, oh, I wonder if I can find it in my journal from the time. Uh, 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 uh. He said to me, um, from John 5 verse 16, and I said, Lord, I just want to know if it's your will for me to have another one. I don't, you know, I, I surrender, I give everything to you. That's a key to brokenness. We surrender our will for his will. And I said, Lord, I just don't believe this is how the story ends. Although doctors say it's impossible, although they give me 1%, I'll take that 1% with you, Jesus, but only if it's your will. Please show me from your word. And in that hospital room, the Lord opened up a verse to me that leapt off the page from John 15, verse 16. And he said, I have chosen you and appointed you. I have ordained you that you might bear fruit and that your fruit might remain. And I knew in that moment that God had a miracle for me. Fast forward about oh I don't know a number of months and I was in Ghana ministering and we've been preaching this particular I've been preaching this particular night at, at a crusade and ha seen hundreds of people come to know Jesus and in fact uh, Bishop Osmond shared with me afterwards how a church had been established there in that place from the number of souls that had come to know Jesus and you know what a, a, nothing nothing like the fruit of seeing souls saved the those who were were heading for a, a lost eternity one for Jesus but at that time I went back and I was sharing with Katie who was with me and I saw in my my journal and realized wow on that very date that was my baby's due date and on that very date hundreds had come to know Jesus don't allow your brokenness to contain you and to hold you back, but place your brokenness into God's hands and allow it to propel you into all God has for you. Because what blessed the socks of me was the number of souls who came to know Jesus on that date that was our baby's due date. Heaven had already won because our baby was in heaven and I will one day see that precious little child again. What victory? Victory to victory is where God takes us, not from loss, to loss when we place loss in God's hands I could always say to doctors and to anybody through that I knew heaven had gained my baby I knew heaven had ultimately won and on the due date of my baby heaven won again with such a fruitful harvest of souls for God's kingdom and that I thought wow that must have been what God was talking about that he would where he said that I have ordained you that you should bear fruit and your fruit will remain I'll take that God those spiritual sons and daughters who have been born into the kingdom of God. Um, and I came back home from, from ministering in Africa, in Ghana, from that particular trip. And within a month, I found out to my surprise, I was expecting what um, we now call our darling Judah. Judah means praise. But our surprise number five, and obviously our sixth child, is in heaven. Um, and what a victory that... This little Judah, he's now three years old. He is, well, God gave me a promise um, when I first found out I was pregnant and I felt panic kick in initially of, the, oh, oh my goodness, I nearly died last time. Um, and then God spoke to me as I was worshipping in the service one Sunday morning and said, um, I have, pres this child is preserved, protected and perfected within your womb. And I knew all would be well. Um, so God gave me that spiritual harvest, which still continues today. And he also gave me the fulfillment. Put your brokenness into God's hands. That dark hour of the soul 
will turn into such a blessing, such a fruitful harvest in your life if you will entrust the brokenness into God's hands. So today if you're walking through a broken experience, a time of loss, that dark hour of the soul for your life, I pray just as it says in Isaiah, that God will give you the treasures of darkness, riches stored in secret places. Be willing, be willing to surrender to God. Even though it looks dark and bleak, God has treasures that he will bring to you. Treasures from his word, treasures of a closeness and a comfort from him and the Holy Spirit that will be unspeakable and full of God's glory. So I just want to pray for you now, if you're going through that brokenness, if you're not, pop this word in your back pocket because one day you're going to need it and know that that brokenness is always an openness to the manifestation of the miraculous in your life in Jesus name. Let, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for your message today, Lord. I thank you that Lord in our brokenness, you come and you can, you can turn that brokenness and that time of loss into time of great gain and fruitfulness. And so, Lord, for every person listening today and responding to your word, I pray, Jesus, that you will give them those treasures through the dark hour of their soul. You will give them riches stored in those secret places in Jesus' name, that you will cause their lives to be built upon that rock as they cast themselves upon the rock and are broken. I praise you that you will make them whole and you will build their lives upon the rock. You will build something so beautiful and glorious that Jesus, you will be lifted up to every life surrendered to you today. Thank you for our brokenness, that is our openness to the miraculous, that Holy Spirit, you can flow out of us and we can see many, many people who can look into our lives and see Jesus. Thank you, Father. We place our trust in you today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.